Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. amen. If you are not in the house, shout a big, big, big amen. amen. Tell yourself, I'm a child of God. I'm a born again. I'm a new creation. I'm the light of the world. I'm the salt of the earth. So I'm an agent of change. I'm an agent of dominion. Say so all things are working together for my own good, for I am born of God. I overcome every trials, all the challenges of this present time. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Man. Say, I know who I am. I am a world changer. I'm a carrier of his divine nature. Hallelujah. I'm a living temple. I'm a mobile temple. God lives with me. Christ lives with me. My body belongs to him. My body is his temple. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord dwells in me. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 This morning, I'll be preaching on a topic titled The Keys to True Prosperity. Somebody say the keys. Somebody say the keys. Somebody say the keys. Somebody say the keys to true prosperity. Somebody say the keys to true prosperity. Say the keys to true prosperity. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants abundance in every of his children. God wants abundance in every area of your life. God wants you to succeed in life. God wants abundance in every area of your life. When the subject of prosperity is brought up in the church or wherever we are, money is usually the first thing that comes to mind. When the subject of prosperity is brought up, money is usually the first thing that comes to mind. We have been conditioned by the world That is a lie for the pit of hell. We have been conditioned by the world to believe that a person with a lot of money in his account is prosperous. To think about money when you will hear the word prosperity is not incorrect. Tell that it is incomplete. One can have one as a child of God, you don't need to accept poverty. As a Christian, you don't need to accept poverty. Let's quickly look at top John one two. Top John the one verse two. Just one chapter. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Hallelujah. New Living Translation says, Say, Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in the spirit. So we are talking about prosperity. We are not just talking about the one that has money in his account or like buoyant or whatever. No. When you are sick in your body, then you are poor. When you are sick in your spirit, you 
are poor. And when you are not cash in your bank account, and your boss, you are also poor. So God wants you to be prosperous in three ways. Say, the Lord, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be held. That thou mayest prosper, be held. Even as your soul prosper. So if you are one million dollar or one million naira in your account, you are one Christ in you, you are not prosperous. Jesus. 
Christ. Every sickness in your body will disappear now in Jesus' name. I command every sickness in your body to disappear in the name of Jesus. Poverty lead you now in the name of Jesus. The plan and the life of God is for you to prosper. The plan of God is for his children to succeed, is for his children to prosper, is for them to be happy. Prosperity implies abundance. Prosperity implies fullness and sufficiency. That's what prosperity is all about. Abundance implies fullness and sufficiency. From today, you no longer lack. Amen. From today, lack has come to an end in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Beloved, true prosperity comes from God. True prosperity comes from God. It does not come from your expertise. It does not come from what you know. It does not come from your connection. It comes from God. It comes from God. It's an offer that is reserved for those who are part of the Commonwealth of Israel by faith through repentance from sin. So once you leave the other side of your life and come to Jesus, he empowers you to prosper. It's a free gift given to every new creation. It is a free gift given to everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord. It is a free gift given to those who are born again, to who are living a regenerated life. Praise God. To prophet come from God is an offer that is reserved for those who are part of the commonwealth of Israel.
You kill someone to the rich, it will not last. And at the end, they end up in hell. You do someone in the in the other way, you do someone why just to, to enjoy your, your, to just that present time, you won't you won't enjoy it. It will not last. That is why you need Jesus. Because he's the one that has the key to true prosperity. Jesus is the one that has the key to true prosperity. The prosperity that, that is cutting up from ungodly way does not last. Anyone who accumulates riches through unscrupulous means is not wise. That one will end up in hell. That one will see many people tell you that Christians, but yet they, 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 they cheat people. They tell lies to succeed. They tell that Christians, they, they, they do rituals. They go into politics. They tell a lot of lies. And, and, and they make money out of lies. Such money cannot last. Like most of the use our Western for to make a, 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 a story case. You know, he's a pastor, a regional pastor of the Christian church. But he left his office and went into Protestant. And to so last week, he had been indicted. The, the, the former year ESC uh, chairman said he gave him four billion. That messed him up. Such money cannot last. Jesus, that is what I need to give the man. If you get your own word and lose your soul, the wages of sin is dead. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. Someone say, Amen. Amen. Anyone who accumulates riches through unscrupulous means is not wise. It is it is certain that we brought nothing into this world and we are going back home with nothing. So what are you cheating people to, to make wealth? Why are you telling lies? Why are you undoing people to just succeed here on earth? Knowing that one day you will leave everything in God. You will know where just is now. Imagine a man that has about maybe, maybe one billion in his account and somehow died. He won't know where the one billion is. So why are you trading your life to just materialism? Why not allow the Lord himself to bless you with the blessing that make it rich and ask no so? Praise God. You see many pastors today, they do a lot of things to build you know, this will be that will, that will soon be destroyed. They do a lot of things to, to gather wealth for themselves, to buy a car and all the rest. But if one day they will leave those things that where they are. One of God General just died as, as a, yesterday or about two days ago, Maurice Dr. Sidney Long. But so it was his age, he has affected nations, he has affected lives. My wife was affected by the mission of Dr. Sereno. Praise God. He took proof what they call legacy center recently. He was supposed to take the legacy center before the COVID. So, uh, 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 and so he did the, 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 the dedication of legacy center. So, after a while, I don't know what will happen, they dedicated a very big, the bigger than Kenama. He showed the bigger than place. As I said, he sent me a mail, as I last week, he sent me a mail that he wanted to be in pastor's um, conference in Florida. As of yesterday, they sent me a mail from him that he is a wedding anniversary. I should send a message. But as of yesterday, he is no longer alive. So all these things were my prayer, all the frame, all the materialism, where are we going to take them to? That is why we know the most he must seek for, for, for the peace of God. He must seek for the prosperity that lasts forever. And that is the prosperity of your soul. Praise God. We brought nothing into the world and we are going out of this world with nothing. It doesn't matter how many billions you have, you have, you have in your account. Once you die, just this week. That is why we love it and make your ways. Don't run after materialism. Don't run after money. As a child of God, you don't need to run after money. Money ought to run after you. 
grace of true prosperity cannot be devoid from purity. It cannot prosper. True prosperity, it, we cannot prosper when you are living in sin. True prosperity comes from purity. When you live a life of purity, God prospers you. So any prosperity you get from sin, you get from lying or, or signing one document or the other, does not last. So true prosperity cannot be devoid from purity. It cannot be devoid from purity. Let's see first Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. Praise God. First Timothy chapter 6. Six to ten. Says that godliness with contentment is great day. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out of it. Verse 8. And having food and running, let us be there with content. The day that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hopeful loss which draw men in destruction and partition. The day that will be rich Translation. 
Esprit Saint, tu as dit à chaque aimé. Il dit, yeah, true godliness with contentment is his great world. True godliness with his contentment is his great world. He said, after all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. That's why you need to be careful the way you live. You need to be careful the way you pursue after material, after money. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. The people who love to be rich fall into temptation. People who praise God. So the people who love to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into rain and destruction. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds. For the love of money is the root of all kinds. So of all kinds. All kinds. For the question of doctrine, lying, cheating, and all of things. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Or all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many souls. They have erred from true faith. You have passed up. For some, for you to cancel somebody you want them to drop one thousand dollar canceling fee is not of God. You will pay for it. For you to prophesy to somebody that was paying you, you are doomed already. Praise God. They want to make money by all means, so they begin to lie, begin to drop up, abominable things to be rich. Praise God. Verse 7, let teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Money is unreliable. Money that, that I've gotten in the wrong way are unreliable. Imagine the ESCC chairman who was arresting people. He arrested Jonathan, who have arrested many persons. Down to them, as I'm talking with you, he's in cell. They are dealing with him. He has even indicted our vice president that he gave him four billion naira. When you serve God in the spirit and in the truth, He gives you all things to enjoy. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. The keys to true prosperity can be found in the word of God. The keys to true prosperity can be found in the world. It cannot be found in your expertise, it cannot be found in your certificate, your connection. It cannot be found in whatever thing you can do to, to cheat others. It can only be found in the word of God. You want to prosper in, in kingdom way. Some of you are many people in, in, in the body of Christ do not they, they don't know the truth. They can do anything. They, yet they are in church. They are not in touch with God. They don't even really know what they are doing. That's why going to some mega churches, you see, are really good boys. The word of God they are preaching is not affecting them. You see, ritualists. The word of God is not affecting them. They can even give somebody in the previous night and be in church this morning. Why the world is not affecting them? Please. The world is not affecting them. The, 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 the key to true prosperity can be found in the world. Any prosperity you got that is not in, found in the world or is contrary to the world is not of God, it will perish. It will destroy you. It will destroy you. It got the money. It got the money. It got the money. Uh, one of my friends told me, uh, you know, 
They had a meeting with the Archbishop of, uh, I, won't, I won't mention the, the, the diocese or the, the, the province. And one of the, the key men, the visitor, is a member of a, what is it called? This court, Oboni Fraternity. Free mercy. And somehow, they tried to rebuke the Archbishop of said, no, no, you know, just allow them, we, we, they, we need their money. We need their money, so you don't need to when they leave, how will you build? They are talking about physical building. I took my car to a mechanic and, he, and the mechanic told me in GRA, he said that, he said, Pastor, there's one thing that marvels me. He's a member of Anglican. In GRA, I won't call it the, 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 the diocese of seven. He said that a, a, a member of the church, a very wealthy man, the man is so wealthy. And the man told him, he said, when we go to heaven or when we die, we know the people that will go to heaven. He said, in the church, I know because I won't tell you about the free mercy. He, he said he's a free mercy and he want to belong to Atlanta. He said when you people need money, you come to us. But when it's time that people he speak against us. He would come and say, I was telling them, he told them, please, that, 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 that vicar. He said when you need money, you come to us, we give you money to build, to do more of things. But when it's time on the pulpit, he talk against us. He said, me and the more free mercy, that was what he said. And they, 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 my engineer told me, he said, every major work in that is the man that is a very wealthy man. Praise God. So, was any money you make that is contrary to the word of God is not lasting. It will destroy you. Whether you're a pastor, you are a vice president, you're a president, you're a governor, or whatever you're a businessman, any money you make out of wickedness will destroy you. Someone say, after I didn't steal money from anybody, I can just my pen, I just, I just signed. He's stealing. How do you, you, your salary is one million, and you have more than 10 billion in your account. You're, you're, you're a thief. How would the nation, how would Nigeria be better? Even our pastors are lying, praying for the politicians that are dubious. I'm not telling the truth. Praise God. I say, praise God. The key to true prosperity can be found in the word of God. The key to true prosperity can be found in number one. You must keep all the commandments of the word of God for you to prosper in kingdom way. For you to enjoy true prosperity, you must do things for God to prosper you with his blessings. Number one, you must keep all the commandments of God. You must keep one commandment. That's how true prosperity comes. True prosperity will all come for you keeping all the commandments of God. Keeping all the commandments of God. There are things you ought to do for God to prosper you. There are things you ought to do for God to bless you. And many don't want to follow the world. They want to buy it. They want to follow through short court. Praise God. You must keep all commandments number one. Keep for true prosperity, number one, you must keep to all the commandments of the world, all the commandments of God. You must keep to all the commandments of God, which is in His word. Let's quickly look at Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 8. This was the instruction of Moses to Joshua. Moses was a prosperous leader. And when he was handed over to Joshua, he wanted to also be prosperous. Praise God. I said, Praise God. He said, This book of the Lord, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, said, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. So, true prosperity comes from the word of God, it comes from God. He said, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate that in thee. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou sh and then thou shalt have what? Good success. So success comes from God. Prosperity comes from God. And for God to prosper you, you must, you must observe all that is written in the world. You must observe all that is written in the world of God. Let me read from New Living Translation. 
praise God. The things of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. How many times have you meditated on the world? How many times have you, have you studied the world to know what the world is saying concerning your prosperity, concerning your life, concerning your health? Praise God. Just watch chapter 1, verse 8, we need translation. He says, study this book of instruction. So prophetic that is not based on the word, does not last. It will destroy you. He says, study this book of instruction. Continually meditate on it day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Praise God. So the number one thing to do for that thing is for you to study the world and do all that is written in it. Number two key, you must enter into a covenant of sacrificial giving with the Lord. Covenant of sacrificial giving. You want to prosper in the kingdom, you must enter a covenant of sacrificial giving. You don't just give, it, give anything that comes into your hand. You don't just live your life anyhow as a covenant person. You must enter a covenant of prosperity. You must enter a covenant of such a giving for you to prosper in the kingdom. For you to be great. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's quickly see Second Corinthians chapter 9. We are about to close the service. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 6 to 8. So that this I say, he who soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Say, every man according as he proposeth in heart to let him be, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have it all sufficient in all things they are found in every good work someone say amen, amen. so when you will prosper in the kingdom you will be a giver you will be a sower you will be a giver you will be a sower the last key to true prosperity number three Yet for prosperity by planning and praying. As a Christian, he must plan. Many Christians do not plan. Many Christians don't plan. They say, Oh, after prayer, they say, God, my God will supply my need, and they and they go sleep. He must plan. He must plan. It was not something you are doing. So that God will bless it. So I bless the wash of your hands. Whatever you do it, I will, I will, I will, it will prosper. Whatever you do it, it shall prosper. So if you have nothing to do, there is nothing for God to bless. Praise God. Hallelujah. And one thing, you must keep all the commandments from the word of God. But two, you must enter into the kingdom of the church with the Lord. And the three, you must yield for prosperity by planning and praying. Plan and pray. And God will bless. Praise God. Let's see Psalm 118 verse 25. Psalm 118, that last scripture we are reading. Psalm 118 verse 25. Please go. Psalm 118 verse 25. The Psalm is a self now. I beseech thee, he was praying. He was praying. He said, Son, now I beseech thee. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I beseech thee. Son, now prosperity. He prayed and prayed and I love to say prosperity. Be Lord, for you to prosper in the kingdom, you will be a sower. You will be a sower. You study the world. You must, you must follow the world. Study the world. Do the thing that the world is asking you to do. Then pray. Praise God. Because God delights in your prosperity. 
God is not where you are poor, when you live beggarly. God is not happy when your business is not doing well. God is not happy when you are his child or daughter, you are, you are not doing well. God wants to be an affluent, wants to be a blessing to his kingdom and to the world. Praise God. This morning I pray that the Lord will give you grace. The Lord will give you grace to study the world. And to show yourself approved as a woman that never to be ashamed. Dividing the word of truth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, God is releasing grace from true prosperity upon you. No more struggling for you. No more begging for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. God has served will supply all your needs. And God to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. The Lord, for you to succeed and prosper, you need Jesus. The gift that you are alive without Christ ends up in crisis. Remember what Moses told Joshua? He said, he said This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Observe and do all. So what you want to do this morning is for you to give your life to Jesus. You want to do this morning for you to succeed if you to give your life to Jesus. I'm saying that's the way that sin has right unto a man by the end of them to destruction. Jesus is calling you this morning. Say, come unto me, all that labor and I have you left, I will give you rest. This morning we see the rest of God. In the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, and you want to give your life to Jesus, lift your hands. And begin to confess your sins. Ask God for mercy. Ask you to cast your name on the book of death and transfer it to the book of life. Say, Lord Jesus, help me this morning. I cannot help myself. I cannot save myself. I cannot, I cannot bless myself. I cannot prosper myself. I need you, Lord, this morning. Come and help me. I need your grace to serve you to the end. I need your grace to succeed here on earth and to also make heaven at last. Cry out to God this morning. Pour out your heart to Him. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. I'm so sorry. In every way I've sinned against you, in words in my tongue, in any way I've compromised by cheating somebody, by telling lies to survive, by doing dubious things to survive. I'm so sorry, Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy. Open your mouth and begin to pray, Lord. I receive grace to stand on the word of God in the name of Jesus. Stand on your feet and begin to pray. Lord, I need grace. I need grace to stand on the word of God. On the day of my life. I need grace, Lord, to stand on the word of God. Open your mouth and begin to pour out your heart to him. Say, Lord, I need grace to stand on your word. I need grace to stand on your word. I need grace to stand on your word. I need grace, I need grace to stand on your word for my daily living. Open your mouth to pray. And Lord, Father Jesus, Lord Jesus, I need your grace. I receive grace to stand on the word of God. I receive grace to stand on the word of God. I receive grace this morning to stand on the word of God. I receive grace. Open your mouth and Lord, I receive grace.